Hello! This is just a test recording of Arcanum. I want to give it a little shot before I do the real deal. So let's make a new game with a new character. I'm going to make a female human. I uh, kind of like that portrait. Although, while she looks very aristocratic, she also looks a little bit condescending, I think. <laughs> Which is fine with me. That's just going to work into what her character will be. Now, males and females are actually a little bit different in this, in this game. So the males are, as you see, strength 8, constitution 8, so they're just, they're just kind of baseline. While females get, well, not dwarves, females <laughs> get a bonus to constitution, but a negation in strength, which I think kind of makes sense. It's cool that they have something different between them. Most games wouldn't do that because it'd be kind of, uh, maybe a little politically incorrect. Now this one's going to be a debutante. Your family is one of the most influential in all of Arcanum. As a young debutante, you have bonuses to beauty and charisma. Of course, the easy life has made you soft in mind and body. You have penalties to strength, dexterity, and all of your combat skills. Now, it's funny because although it says soft in mind and body, you see that the only changes here are strength and dexterity and combat skills, which I would think would be entirely body. There's no real penalty to our mind here. It's like they intended the penalty to be more, but they didn't. It really seems that way, because generally, most of these backgrounds give you a pretty nice penalty at a huge detriment, or a minor pe penalty at a moderate de detriment. They're, they're rarely balanced 50-50. They, they kind of help you towards a certain kind of character, but at a cost. Now, the cost here is pretty insignificant. Two point, one point in strength, one point in dexterity, that's almost nothing. Very insignificant. And combat skills? Eh. We're not even going to be using them anyway, because we're going to be going for magic. So, for that, we get six bonus points. You know, it just, I don't know. Seems a little unbalanced there, but I'm going to go with it. I'm going to call her Belle. Not Bella. <laughs> Belle. Alright. I'm going to increase her beauty, which is which affects how people react to us when they first see us. And charisma, which affects how... Uh, how we can react to other people, basically. And for with the charisma, I can increase my persuasion. I could put it up three points, but I'm going to hold off for now. It's two is good for now, because I want, under magic, to get the harm spell under necromantic black. Necromantic black is basically dark necromancy, and there's light necromancy. The white is, as you can see, healing spells and eventually resurrection. Well, the dark is harming spells, conjuring spirits, and summoning undead, that kind of thing. Uh, and most Let's Plays go for technology, but I'm going to go for magic for two reasons. For one, it's just easier, and for another, because the technology kind of requires you to have some physical trait for it to work off of. Well, magic, it's, well, it's magic. <laughs> it just works, right? So you can just cast a harm spell and it takes down your fatigue. At the cost of fatigue, it will harm the creature just like that. Well, with under technology, you could make yourself a um, like a gun or something. But what good is it if you can't use it? And in order to use it, you need a high dexterity, I believe. Either that is per if, or it's perception, but I think it's dexterity. So... Uh, where we got it? Yeah, here we go. We got firearms here. Okay, it does take perception. You can see down there, minimum perception to raise six. All right, but we're not gonna do that. We're gonna go for for magic. It'll be easier that way. I think she deserves a better dress than this kind of frumpy little thing. So let's get her something a little prettier. Also, plenty of uh, potions. Potions are kind of the magic side of things. If, if you're very high, highly based in uh, technology, you won't even be able to properly use potions. They will just kind of have no effect whatsoever. Well, these healing salves are considered to be the technology version of a, of a healing potion. Which is funny, because all they really are is just a mortar, mortar and pestle with some mushed, um, some mushed herbs in them. You know, how much technology is really involved there. Just simple tool use, that's all. And yet, if you were very high magic, those would do nothing to you. Which, kind of funny. 
But oh well, we can roll with it. And let's begin. Help me, please. Oh, thank you, my friend. I haven't got much time. <coughs> you must find the boy. Find the boy and give him back his ring. Now he will know what needs to be done. <coughs> now listen, listen to me. We had to do it. He did unspeakable things to us, and we, we had no choice but to do as he said. And there are so few of us left, but the work is almost finished, and then the evil, oh, you can't imagine. He's coming back to destroy everything, everything and everyone. Now, please, just find the boy. <coughs> Tell him that I escaped. I came back to warn. <coughs> he will know what to do. You, my friend, it's all up to you. I can't believe it. I mean, you and and then the zeppelin and, and the fire. And the altar says that... Do you have any idea what all of this means? Okay, so we just survived, and mir miraculously survived, I might add, an enormous crash of this gigantic flying machine. This gigantic blimp, Zeppelin. And now all of a sudden there's a strange man who just walked out of the... out of the smoke and starts jabbering on about something. We... we we don't even know what, so... By the gods, man, I almost died here. Didn't you see the crash? You speak! I, I mean, of, of course you speak. What am I, a blathering idiot? Wait, what, what did you say? Maybe I should be writing all of this down. So who is this blathering idiot? Uh, um... Well, it's kind of impolite for a lady to do too much swearing, so let's go with... I'd like to help you out here, but I'm a bit confused, and that's putting it lightly. I am at a loss here. I, I, I don't quite know what to do. Uh, I mean, you are the... the oh, of course you are. I mean, you do know who you are, right? Of course you do. What, what, what sort of brainless, half-baked question is that? The, the, uh, the, uh, what, 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 what do you call yourself? I'm beginning to think this guy escaped from a mental, inti mental inti institution or something. T mental in institution, yeah. <laughs> oh boy. Am I being unclear? Your babbling is incomprehensible. And that's, again, putting it very lightly. 
Please, forgive me. I'm making a bloody mess of this whole affair. My name is Virgil, madam, and I'm new to the Panari religion. Uh, your religion, and I... Oh, oh, wait. Uh, I, uh, hereby dedicate... No, no, uh, commit my life to the living one. I, Virgil, am at your service, madam. Now, as an aristocrat, and a beautiful one at that, I imagine we may tend to lean more towards the evil side of things. Not just because we're an aristocrat, mind you, but I don't know, I think that that works for this portrait and this background of this character. So it could be interesting. And I think we've also got a little bit of a pride streak, so to speak. So, yes, rise. You may uh, rise and serve me, loyal Virgil. Listen, madam. I may be new to the Panari, but that does not mean that this morning was my first sunrise. Are we clear on that? I can see that you're as muddled about all of this as I am, and I don't appreciate being made a fool of. Keep that up, and I'll tell you where you can stow that living one rubbish. Uh, madam? I wish you would stow that rubbish, but whatever. Let's see. Uh, fine. Just tell me what all this living one talk is about. Yes, yes, of course. You see... You're him. I, I mean, the, uh, the reincarnation of, uh, uh what's his name? I, I can never remember. And, and I, I'm always getting him mixed up with the other fellow, the, the bad one. You, um, well, you know how all of those old elven names sound the same. <laughs> uh, hmm. <sighs> I don't think I'm quite getting the gist of it, Virgil. Yes, right. Uh, just give me a moment here. You, you see, the Panari. That's the religion that was formed around the things that he said. I, I mean, that you said. Oh, forget it. Let, let's start at the beginning. Or this beginning, since there is a lot more that came before this. You are the reincarnation of a powerful elf who the Panari worship and whose name is, uh... So he's just claiming that we're the reincarnation of someone. Okay. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, the name. Oh, uh, wait. Remember something. It is written in the scriptures. The living one will live again on wings of fire. No, 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 wait. I think it says, reborn on wings of fire. Oh, blood and ashes. Why do elves always have to be so damn cryptic? Uh-huh. <laughs> this is a true Life of Brian moment right here because, I mean, even though... Maybe from this guy's perspective, we just survived this miraculous crash, and that's it. And yeah, we did. From our perspective, even though uh, we've not seen it so far, we, we're we uh, clearly an adult lady. You know, we're a full-grown woman, so we've had a whole life up to this point. Being raised as a debonta, debu, debu, debutante. Excuse me. <laughs> a debutante. There we go. <laughs> I don't know what, what was going on there, but anyway... The, so we've had a life up to this point and you know who knows how long I don't recall what the age was maybe 21 years or something like that so I think we've pretty much established in our minds as a character by now that we are not the living one that was just madness nonsense it makes no sense we were just enjoying our day enjoying a nice flight and all of a sudden boom crash and then this nut job so I think our patience is starting to wear thin. Nevertheless, do the scripture do the scriptures speak of a dying gnome and a ring? Hmm. I don't know about the ring, but this business about the evil one returning. Oh, as I've said, I don't know a whole lot about the Panari prophecies, but I think you were supposed to return and fight someone evil. Ah, uh, bloody hell! I should know more of this. Uh, who said anything about the evil one returning? He's like, but this business about the evil one returning, we didn't say anything about that. We asked about a gnome and a ring. Unless we, between the lines, told him what this dead gnome here told us about um, the evil or something. I don't know. Yeah, you don't seem very well versed in the scriptures, Virgil. Blast it all! There's a damned altar around here somewhere. Look on that if you're so bloody smart. Uh... uh Esteemed living one, madam, look, I'm as new to all of this as you are. But the 
thought this was all allegorical until I saw you crawl from that flaming Zeppelin wreckage unscathed. It seems the Panari were right after all. I think you're just being presumptuous, buddy. The Panari? Who are they? Uh, let's just ask and get this out of the way. The Panari are a religion based on the belief that you will return to destroy evil or, or something like that. No, wait. I think there's someone you're meant to fight. You know, that... that other fellow. The evil one. Oh, it's, it's all so elven, wrapped up in fancy language and metaphors and all that. I see. You're fairly useless as a source of information. Gotta say. <laughs> I told you I was new with this. Imagine the way I must feel. Here you are, the chosen one, or uh, living one, and, and I can't even remember who you're supposed to be. Please, just follow me to Shrouded Hills and we'll talk to the Elder Joachim. He's very knowledgeable about the Panari and will know much better what to do. Uh, this guy's a little bit of a tool, isn't he? He wants us to see, see things from his perspective as a, as a dude who just walks up and is making assumptions left and right. <laughs> what about our perspective? I mean, look at all this. That's our perspective. We just survived a what the hell moment. And... Just barely at that. Our life went from, you know, great to trapped in some place we don't know, some land we didn't intend to be in, and it was just a, a complete mess. And he wants us to see it from his perspective. Tuh. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere with you, Virgil. Good day. Why would I go with this nut job? Look, obviously we're both involved in this whether we like it or not. Please, you must trust me. I know all of this sounds ludicrous, but if you'll just speak with the Elder Joachim, I... He... I don't want to fail him. He wants me to go with him for his sake, this stranger. Yeah, I don't think so. I'm involved in nothing. Leave me alone. Please, I need to bring you to my mentor, Elder Joachim. He's down the mountain in Shrouded Hills. He can tell us what we're meant to do. Now our option... One of these options is to threaten him, and as much as that might be in our character, uh, I'm pretty sure we're smart enough to realize that this strange man may be dangerous, and we're still level one. <laughs> so I think I'll just, uh, fine, fine, I can't get rid of you. It doesn't look like I can get rid of you, so let's go. The path out of here leading down to Shrouded Hills is down to the southeast. We'll stop by the Panari Shrine on the way out. See if it makes any of this any more clear. We should look for any other survivors before we leave, though. What do you think? Agreed. Or rather, I'm gonna pick over their bodies. Actually, no. I couldn't care less about these unlucky buggers. <laughs> Let's go! Although, I'm still gonna pick up their bodies. Well, not their bodies, but what's on their bodies? Why not? We've got a passport from for Preston Radcliffe. The gnome who talked to us. Isaac... Z whatever. He's got... A camera. And an anal thermometer. A rectal thermometer. Alright. Here's how this is gonna go. I've got harm. And... Get in that quick slot there. Alright. And this will be very useful for this reason. Boom. Now, you may notice I've been getting XP each time I damaged it. Well, in this game, kind of cleverly, you get XP for hitting or damaging an opponent, not for killing it. So, that means that, um, on one hand, you don't have to kill something to advance in level, which is nice, especially if you suck. But on the other hand, it means that your uh, party members can steal XP from you if they help you. So the more party members you have, the less experience you'll be getting from combat. Oh well. Oh well. It kind of encourages you to rely on yourself. But you can still get lots of experience points from quests and that sort of thing. Now another thing that makes magic so easy. You notice over here our blue bars went going down. This isn't mana. This is our fatigue. If it hits zero, we'll faint. Uh, let me pick a opponent that's not too dangerous and I'll show you. I'm going to spam this. There. See, we fell over. We fainted. 
Yep, there we go again. 